There have been air raids and gunfire in Sudan's capital a day before humanit a humanitarian truce is due to come into effect between the army and the paramilitary rapid support forces. The two sides have been locked in a power struggle since mid-April. More than one million people have been displaced by the fighting and at least 850 killed. The seven-day ceasefire was brokered by the U.S. and Saudi Arabia, but both sides have failed to honour previous agreements. Al Jazeera's Hiba Morgan has more on the deal from Omdurman on the outskirts of Khartoum. The ceasefire that was signed between the Sudanese army and the Rapid Support Forces does not come into effect until around 9.45 p.m. local on Monday, which is around 19.45 GMT. Now, people here say that they're going to wait and see how it unfolds on the ground. They've seen how previous ceasefires have played out between the two sides with the ongoing sounds of artillery fire and airstrikes being launched uh, against the RSF by the Sudanese army, despite the fact that both sides have agreed to a ceasefire. This time, it's a bit different. Uh, it's the first time that the two sides actually signed on paper uh, on a ceasefire uh, that is supposed to last for seven days. And there will be a monitoring mechanism. So there will be three members from the Rapid Support Forces three members from the Sudanese army and six other members from the United States and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to monitor any violations uh, in the agreement. The agreement also specifies that there will be no use of heavy artillery uh, in residential areas and that there should be no firing at each other by both sides for humanitarian aid to come in and that there should be no airstrikes launched by the Sudanese army. So this is the specifics or part of the specifics of the deal that was signed uh, on late Saturday between the Rapid Support Forces and the Sudanese army in Jeddah. Now, people again here say that they don't believe that it will actually hold. They want to see what happens on Tuesday morning, what happens on Wednesday, and when they actually see humanitarian aid starting to come in, when they feel that they can actually uh, leave their homes uh, because it's, the situation is safer and calmer and try to make it to safer zones where there's no active fighting, that's when they'll know that the ceasefire is holding. It's also supposed to open humanitarian corridors for those who are in need of aid uh, here in the capital Khartoum and in other parts uh, of the country, especially the western region of Darfur. So people say that as much as they want a ceasefire so that they can be able to try to get basic commodities from the markets or for aid to come in or for them to be able to leave their homes, they're going to wait and see how the first days of the ceasefire plays out before they actually believe that there is a ceasefire being implemented on the ground. Heba Morgan, Al Jazeera, Omdurman.